Welcome to Inside the Indians, your source for insider information on the tribe. Stay with us as we bring you the latest about the players, managers, and people behind the scenes at Victory Field. Now here's your host, the longtime broadcast voice of the Indians, Howard Kelman. Hi everybody and welcome to Inside the Indians. On today's show, we'll talk with Marty Peavy, the longtime manager of the Iowa Cubs and former Indianapolis Indian player. We'll be back with Marty after these words. our guest on Inside the Indians, former Indianapolis Indian player and the manager of the Iowa Cubs for many, many years. Marty, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Howard. How, how about yourself? Doing really good. Always nice to see you. We saw you a couple of times this year at Victory Field. You have some really good ball players. You just had some players pass through. I know we have a lot of Cub fans, some, some good players on your team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we've got... Um, Pete Crow Armstrong now, Canario, uh, you know, this kid, uh, Jonathan Perlaza is having a great year. Matt Mervis, of course, uh, Jared Young, um, PJ Higgins behind the plate. We got a convert young conversion kid, uh, Bryce Windham, who's, this is only his third year catching. So, uh, yeah, we've got some, with some kids and we got a, uh, a shortstop that's going to be a big league shortstop at some point. Uh, he's 22, 23 years old, um, and uh, we, you know, they're they're doing a great job. They really are. You also have some good young pitching. Yeah, we are. We've been we've been fortunate. Uh, Caleb Killian has uh, really stepped up. Um, we've got some we've got some young guys uh, that have done an excellent job. Um, a lot of them are in the big leagues now, as you, as you guys know. But uh, our pitching has um, got a lot of potential. Marty, what's it been like managing the Iowa Cubs more than 10 years now? Um, I love it. I mean, I, I love the level. I love seeing the look on a kid's face when he's first time getting called up to the big leagues. I love being able to teach and, and uh, try to um, – manage my managing style towards uh the big league manager's style um i you know th these these kids at this level are 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 men and um and uh it's very very rewarding to um get them prepared to play in the big leagues well i think that's beautifully said and the contributions you make in development mean everything to those young players. You know, people talk about it's all about the big leagues and you got to get to the big leagues. But you've done very well in this particular role, and I'm sure the Cubs have taken good care of you. Yeah, the Cubs have been very, very good to me. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, after I got fired for, in the big leagues in uh, 2008, you know, I was a little depressed and um, and. I was I was very I was very fortunate to be able to Dave Bialis, an old manager of mine from the Cardinal days, um, got me a job managing in Peoria in the Midwest League with the Cubs, and uh, you know I, I felt very very fortunate. I, the Cubs have, have uh, really treated me well. What would you say now? You've been managing for the Cubs a long time about the changes in the game now and the way you may have to do some things differently as opposed to years ago? Well, I, I, I honestly, I really don't think it's changed that much. Um, I happened to go to a very good uh, baseball school at Georgia Southern. We had, uh, you know, Jack Stallings, my one of my mentors, other than my father, um, Jack Stallings, uh, he had a, He's got a couple of books. I think it's one's called, I mean, he's passed away now, you know, rest in peace, but um, a couple of books, a textbook, both of them were textbooks. The uh, psychology of coaching and playing sports, I believe is one of them. And the other one was just a baseball one-on-one class that we could take as an elective. And uh, the textbook um, 
this is 1980 now, the, that textbook had all the percentages and stuff that we look at on StatCast. Of course, it didn't have launch angle and exit velocity and stuff like that, but it had, you know, percentages of how many runs you score with a man on first and nobody out versus a man on second and one out versus, uh, you know, so all those stats were in there that we're looking at in the last 10, 12 years since, uh, you know, uh, Billy Bean instituted the money ball stuff. And um, so it's no different to me. I already know, I already knew the, the percentages. I, you know, I didn't need to be told 30 years later. Well, there's a greater emphasis on velocity from pitchers than there was years ago. Your thoughts on that? Well, velocity is awesome. It's hard, you know, the harder you can throw it, of course, um, you know, it's harder to hit. The less time you have as a hitter, the less time you have at the plate to make up your mind whether it's a ball or a strike. Um, so velocity is always good. Uh, deception and uh, being able to change speeds is also really, really good, as we know. Um, uh, what's the kid pitch last night against the Cubs? Uh he pitched for us last year. Doggone it. Left-hander. Oh, Wade Miley. Wade Miley pitched last night for Milwaukee against the Cubs, and he kept us off balance all night. And, he, you know, he's pitching at 88 to 92, you know. So, and he just, uh, you know, Howard, there's three ways to pitch, right? Up and down, in and out, and back and forth. And he was doing two of those extremely well last night. Very well said. We will have more with Marty Peavy. This is Inside the Indian. Marty Peavy, our guest on Inside the Indians, the former Indianapolis Indian player, in the 1980s when the Indians were winning championships, the current manager of the Iowa Cubs. And there are some hitters, Marty, who take more of an all-or-nothing approach than there were. There are more of those guys than there were years ago. So you have power numbers, but the game has a lot more strikeouts than it used to have. Your thoughts on that? Well, um, I think as all baseball fans know, um, all, all baseball fans know that uh, if you don't move the ball forward, you don't have any chance to score a run. So um, I, I like, I, I, I honestly like you to put the ball in play, you know, put the ball in play. You can, the, the pitch and the velocity of the pitch, if you hit it square, you don't, it doesn't have to be all or nothing swing. You know, you can still put the ball in play and hit it hard and drive the ball and, you know, not strike out all the time. Um, and, and, and to boot, fans don't like it. You know, fans don't, they want to see stolen base, a hit and run, a, you know, guy going first to third, a, a great relay throw from the outfield, then cut down a runner at the plate. They want to see action. Um, Nobody wants to see 30 strikeouts, uh, 14 walks, and uh, a homer. It's boring. They're, they're leaving the seventh inning. I think you're right on that. And, uh, you know, one of the ways you feel that all-or-nothing approach is when you put a runner at third and less than two outs, and the last thing you want is a strikeout there. But that's when hitters often don't make the adjustments that they made years ago. Yeah, you got to – if. Like I said, if you don't move the ball forward, you don't score any runs, period. Yeah. Tell us about your coaching staff. Ron Vallone is one of your coaches. He pitched for the Indianapolis Indians in 1999. Yeah, great guy. Uh, dedicated to his craft, works extremely hard. Um, he is, a, uh, he is, a, he is a, a dedicated baseball person. Um, you know, he, uh, he, he is one of the first here every day. He, uh, he wants our players to be successful. He has no agenda. Um, 
I'm sure he'd like to be a major league pitching coach at some point, but he loves to see our guys be successful. Well, he got a lot of time in the big leagues, made a lot of money, and also he was with so many different teams in the big leagues, so you learn so much being with so many different organizations. Yeah, you, you, you're, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to um, hear different ways to do things. So um, it's all about putting those tools in your toolbox and, and being able to use them down the road. So I'm sure that helped his, has helped his uh, coaching expertise. What's it like being part of the Cubs organization on the whole that won the World Series, even though you're in the AAA manager, you're still very much involved. When they won that World Series in 2016, what did that mean to you? Oh, my gosh. It was uh, like a lifelong dream of um, finally winning a World Series ring, even though I was not directly involved. Um, uh, I mean, everyone in the player development had a huge role in um, – us breaking that curse of 108 years of uh, mediocrity. Yeah, it was a long time and a wonderful thing. And do you hear from Cub fans, Chicago Cub fans? Do you hear from Cub fans in general? I, I, I mean, I, I don't get a whole lot of fan mail, Howard. But um, yeah, I get, I get some letters. They're very nice. Yeah, the Cubs are a special franchise. There's no question about that. Yeah, people really love the Cubs. I love the Cubs. I mean, um, what's not to love? We either had um, WTBS, the Atlanta Braves, as we were coming up, or we had WGN with the Cubs. So we had um, we had a couple of choices, and um, I was, you know, I was a big Braves fan too. Was there anybody who was a big influence on you in your for your playing career? Well, as as we well know, Joe Sparks, I think, had a huge impact on um, my playing career um, and probably uh, Dave Bialis and, and Jim Riggleman had a, and George Kissel um, had a huge impact on my uh, on, on my, uh, coach, you know, getting being a teach wanting to be a teacher and a, and a coach and a mentor. You know, Dave Bialis and Jim Riggleman, by the way, I remember them playing against the Indianapolis Indians in Springfield, the late 70s. But you mentioned George Kissel, one of the all-time great baseball people, the impact that he had. Please tell us about him. Well, um, so I signed with the Cardinals out of a tryout camp down in Florida. I went down to Florida with uh, – I'd gotten drafted by Minnesota, um, played half a season in rookie ball, had a good year, hit, you know, I was hitting 280 something, I think. And um, first or second in the league in doubles. And I came in the first of August when the paychecks are due and uh, got released. So I went back to Georgia Southern to uh, finish my degree and then around Thanksgiving, I guess, or Christmas, I decided I wanted to play. Long story short, I went and lived with my girlfriend's roommate's mother down in St. Pete and um, started walking on to these spring training sites and looking for tryouts. The Cardinals gave me one. Me and a kid named Eddie Tanner were the only two picked out of that tryout camp, um, and both of us ended up playing in the big leagues. But George Kissel um, was roving at that point. And so I was in Macon, Georgia, playing for the Redbirds, the Macon Redbirds, with Vince Coleman. Uh, he stole 146 bases that year, missed 30 games. Anyway, um, at, when George was in town, I would give him a ride back to the hotel because he didn't drive. Um so that was my first interaction with George, and I could get we could I could talk for forty five minutes about George, but we don't have that much time. But he was a great, great human being. He wasn't. He knew his baseball. Yeah, he was a huge influence. Um, uh, I got a glove contract because of George. We were an instructional league after my first year, and 
we were walking away and I was going to give him a ride home at the end of the day. And um, the Wilson guy was out there and, and George told him to give me a contract. That's great. We'll have more with Marty Peavy on Inside the Indians. Iowa Cubs manager and former Indianapolis Indian player is our guest. On this final segment, Marty, let's go back to 1988. You played for the Indianapolis Indians. You had a fine season, and what a team that was. Yeah, wow, Howard, that, that's going way back. You're going to put me on the spot here. I'm going to have to remember names, and it's hard to remember. How about Randy Johnson? Oh, my gosh. So I get called up from Double A, and we I met, met the team in Buffalo, and – I, I don't even think I ever caught his bullpen in spring training, you know? So um, I had to run out in between innings in Buffalo and that scoreboard is uh, right in dead center field. And Randy was so tall that his arm was coming out of the, you know, out of the lights. And I was thinking, Oh my gosh. So that was my, that was my first one with Randy. He became one of the greatest pitchers of all time. He won over 300 games, won five silent awards. What did you think when you saw him and caught him that year? Um, what a talent, you know. I mean, he was uh, – I mean, he threw 100, and um, he was uh, – hold on one second. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm on a Zoom call. I'm – Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. That was that was, uh, that was Alex Cohen, our radio person, and uh, he was uh, looking for his radio case in my office. I'll have to have a talk with Alex. He's a very nice guy, by the way, too. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you're talking about Randy Johnson. What did you think when you caught him that year? Um, you know, he's just uh, – he was – had – unbelievable amount of talent i mean you know you knew that when the light came on for him when he started to command his fastball you knew that he was going to be um you know a 15 20 game winner at least in the big leagues yeah and he, he did knew. more than that oh yeah oh my goodness way beyond that tell us about joe sparks and the chemistry that team I'm not sure exactly when you got called it. You said we were in Buffalo. Was it early in the year or was it a little yeah. later? No, it was like, uh, I, I guess we were been about a month into the season, a month okay. and a half. Later. I remember a Denver, Buffalo, I think it was a Denver, Oklahoma City, Buffalo road trip fairly early. That that team, by the way, started off with four straight losses by one run in Nashville. We were one and six. And then we go to that road trip where about five and eight. Otis Nixon said to me, when we come home, we'll be in first place. And he was right. And <laughs> that, that team, Otis Nixon and Rex Hudler resurrected their careers that year. Oh, my gosh. When I first saw those two guys, my first game, when I saw, you know, Otis leading off and Rex hitting second, and uh, the speed and the athleticism of those two guys, it was unbelievable. I was like, holy smokes, the big league team. Yeah, and that team was terrific. How about the job that Joe Sparks did and the chemistry on that ball club? Great chemistry. Joe's always a great leader. Um, just his laid-back style and his teaching techniques were, um, you know, they were hurt. they were uh, they were elite. You know, what can you say? Joe Sparks was a wonderful, not only a human being, but a wonderful manager. He related well to players. He knew how to kid around them, too. A couple of years ago, his first year – Years before that, we had a pitcher named Bob Ochinkle, a left-hander, and he said to him in spring training, now we want you to do well, but not that well. We want you <laughs> to do well so you help the team, but not that well you get called up. And obviously he was kidding, and Ochinko started laughing. That kind of humor is important. Yeah, keeping you guys loose and and uh, not putting that type of pressure. Um, it's Baseball's hard enough without, you know, the staff or coaching staff or our are putting pressure on players and just letting them, you know, do their thing. It's important. 
And that team won it all, and you had a great series in the postseason. That team defeated Omaha to win the league championship series and then defeated Roch uh, Rochester in the AAA World Series, and you excelled. Well, sometimes you get lucky, Howard. <laughs> but it was great the way that team played. They lost the, the team lost the first two games of the AAA championship in Rochester. Yeah. Randy Johnson pitched game three in Rochester, won that game. I think he threw about 130 pitches. And then you won three straight in Indianapolis. Yeah, it was awesome. It was, uh, it was a fun time, no doubt about it. Well, Marty, it's wonderful spending time with you. We thank you so much. I congratulate you on all you've achieved in the game of baseball. Thank you, Howard. We're, uh, we're, we're lucky to have uh, been able to stay around this long, you know? That's well said. That's Marty Peavy on Inside the Indians. our guest, Marty Peavy. Thanks to our producer, Dave West, for all of his great work. See you next year on Inside the Indians.